Hello, my name is Marianne and welcome to Once a Duckling where I hope to encourage you to get crafty and create some fun and beautiful items for your home. And this week's project was a slightly bigger project, so a slightly longer video. I picked up this small vintage suitcase for an absolute bargain on Facebook Marketplace. Now we did definitely seen better days, but I figured we could do something really nice with it. I've given it a good clean and I am using my Dixie Belle Slick Stick Primer to prime the whole of the suitcase. Now originally I was going to go around the hardware, but I decided to do the hardware as well, apart from the handle which I've left blank. So literally just going around the whole of the suitcase giving a good prime to form the basis for our paint after the primer was dried i'm using my annie sloan antoinette chalk paint to give the case a couple of coats of paint now leave the coats to dry before applying the next layer and i'm going around the hardware this time leaving the primer for the paint that we're going to be using for the hardware now I'm going to be using this suitcase to store some old cards and old photos so I'm not doing anything to the inside of the case and I did actually decide as well later down the line to keep the case closed and just paint around it. And all in all for me it took three layers of paint until I was happy with the coverage and there was no streaking left but have a look to see what works for you, kind of depends on the type of paint you're using as well. I wanted to do something slightly different to the rim of the actual suitcase so I'm using some masking tape just to protect it and make sure that no pink paint was going to get on there just to avoid having to do it twice really so I'm just layering it up and protecting the inside of the rim so it makes it easier for me to get some more pink paint and just finish off painting the edges of the suitcase without getting any of the pink paint on the middle bit. And when that masking tape is all in place and stuck down, I'm taking a smaller flat brush to really get in between all that stitching. As you can see on the top left hand side right there, there was quite a lot of blue still showing through from the original suitcase. And having the smaller flatter brush makes it a lot easier to really get in there with your paint and touching up those details. Going all around until it's all pretty and pink. So next I'm removing the masking tape from the rim. I'm going all the way around, gently peeling it off before taking my white acrylic paint to paint the rim white. I'm using Apple Barrel white acrylic from Plaid and this gives a brilliant coverage. I'm really happy with this paint. If you do need to add more than one layer, make sure that the coat is dry before adding another one. I'm avoiding the hardware going all around the suitcase to paint the rim. It was a bit tricky with the camera angle doing the side and the back of the suitcase, but you get the idea. Okay, so you're gonna have to excuse the quality of the film on this bit. As you can tell, it is a lot darker. It was late at night, but I was determined to get this done. So I'm using some masking tape to create a stripe pattern. I start off in the middle point of the suitcase and I'm using another bit of masking tape to create what is gonna be the gray stripe. It's just to get the perfect distance for your striped pattern. Now I've recorded this bit in real time to give you an idea on how to do this. So the middle bit is the guide one, that's gonna be the gray stripe and I'm moving it to the right just to get the perfect distance for my next bit of masking tape. Now this one is gonna be stuck down really, really well because that is gonna be my white stripe. And again, I'm taking out the middle one in a minute to move it along to the right hand side to create the next gray stripe if that makes sense. You just keep moving the guide piece all the way along to create your perfect stripe pattern and follow it all the way down to the back. Now once I was a little bit into the back, I moved it back to the front because I want the front to be the bit that is gonna be perfect. If there's any slight bits where it might be a couple of millimeters out, I want that to fall at the back of the case that you're not gonna see it. So I've moved it back to the front and I'm just gonna do exactly the same on the other side placing that guide down, getting another bit of masking tape and just keep following it along, moving it and going all the way around your design. And as it was, it worked out pretty perfect. There wasn't a lot in it, maybe a couple of millimeters here and there, but I made it work at the back and no one is gonna see it. So to get paint in those gray stripes, I'm using a gray acrylic paint, neutral gray. 
and you can see me slightly offloading the brush on a bit of tissue paper I wanted to start off with not having too much paint on there to avoid any bleeding so go easy take it gentle don't overload your brush and go around the whole of the design now normally I'd probably use a makeup sponge at this point but I would get it all over the rim so I did opt to use the brush and there were a couple of bits that I had to touch up later down the line but that's absolutely fine especially with a flat brush it works really really well and I was really pleased as you can see tiny little bit of bleeding through but just take your flat brush load it with the white paint and touch up any bits that you're not happy with now I cut this stencil with my silhouette machine but you can also get them on Amazon and eBay I'm pretty sure do them as well I'm using some gold acrylic paint I've stuck down a stencil with some masking tape making sure that it's not going to go anywhere and as you can see I am using a makeup sponge but offloading some of the paint making sure there's only a very small amount of paint left on the sponge I always think it's better working with this technique building up those colors gradually it's easier to build the colors than having a load of bleeding and having to repaint um, some of the designs if you're overloading it so all I'm doing is building up those layers and adding more as I go along now you will see I don't do the whole of the pattern I'm not doing the whole of the stencil I'm gradually sort of tapering it down I kind of just wanted to frame it because we're going to be doing something with the middle of the suitcase and you will also see that as I'm going down the pattern those colors are getting a little bit lighter kind of graduating the color slightly and I'm then flipping over the stencil and doing exactly the same on the other side in a mirror image And once your paint is completely dry, I give it a coat of Mod Podge. I'm only going over the area that I've just painted, giving it a layer of protection, but also making it ready for the next step in the project, which is the exciting bit where we get to really jazz it up. And this is my favorite bit. I got these amazing transfers from Bells and Whistles is Alice in Wonderland part two there is a part one I really like this one I like the other one as well but I think this one was perfect for what I wanted it comes with four large sheets so there will be plenty left over for different projects that you may have in mind I've got a couple in mind already and I'm just showing you the different designs and aren't they absolutely gorgeous the part one is equally as nice so have a look I will put the link down below and you can go and check them out now I like to cut out my transfers when I know which ones I want to use so I'm gonna go for the one with the clock and all I'm doing I will be cutting around the transfers that I'm going to be using for the suitcase just to make it easier to handle which is what I'm doing here and then having a bit of a dry run placing those designs on there and seeing what they look like now here is where I messed up guys spoiler alert everything's going to plan so when you peel it off make sure you don't touch the backing of it because it is sticky so I'm positioning it where I want it so far so good decided that I wanted to have it slightly more to the left to have some of the pattern showing before being happy with the design sticking it down and stroking it into place which is how it should be once you've done that you take your transfer tool which you can see on the right hand side it comes in the pack as well and you really really sort of get it down get the design down on there just before I realized I've got the suitcase upside down so I'm having to unpeel it turn the suitcase around and stick it back on there and the problem with that is that once you've got it stuck down it loses its stickiness now I made it work but it was stressful and it was a lot of hard work so learn from my mistakes make sure that you've got it right the first time round because it was really really difficult to get this transfer on here which should not have been the case it should have been as easy as anything you can see there's a couple of slight imperfections fortunately it turned out okay it was fine but it should have been as easy as this one stick it down go over it with your tool peel away the plastic and you're all done 
that's what it should have been like. So yeah, learn from my mistakes. Make sure you check and double check before you stick it down to avoid any unnecessary stress. And because the kit comes with so many beautiful transfers, I did decide to add a couple of um, small ones here and there. So I've got two lovely gorgeous butterflies on the front and I'm doing a couple of bits on the side as well, which again, because of the camera angle was slightly difficult to do, but you can see that I'm going around the side, picking out some flowers and I've got a little crown on the left hand side as well that I'm attaching there. Once everything is stuck down, you're completely happy with your design, give it a good old coat of Mod Podge. This will protect your design and it will make it wipeable. It will not make it waterproof, but it will allow you to wipe your design clean. And although it's matte, it does give a little bit of a, a soft sheen to your project as well. And next we're moving on to the hardware. So I am using some masking tape to protect the suitcase that you've just spent a lot of time on. You don't wanna get that ruined. And I've got some gilding liquid. Now this was a new product that I'd not used before, but I highly recommend. It was absolutely amazing to work with. It goes on like a dream. It works really, really well. And it just gives the whole um, hardware a lovely gold shimmer. I do like a little bit of glitter, a little bit of shimmer, a um, bit of gold here and there. But of course you can totally decide if you wanted to go for a different color. It comes in different colors. I will drop the link down below and you can have a look. I got it on Amazon and there's loads to choose from. And I'm really pleased with that. You can see there's a tiny little bit of bleeding on the top left hand side, but you just touch that up with a small brush and a bit of pink. And I decided to do those bits by the handle in gold as well and adding a bit of interest and a bit of shimmer to it. Now, having added the gold, I decided that the actual rim of the suitcase needed that as well. I think it works really, really well. It comes back in the hardware and it also comes back in the pattern that we did with the Harlequin stencil. So I'm with a small brush going around the whole of the suitcase, painting that rim in the same color. And I think that's looking really, really nice. It just makes it stand out a bit more. And there you can see a bit of a detail. And you can see the transfer that I did as well, that we did earlier. And finally, rather than painting the handle, I decided to wrap it with some twine. I thought the neutral look would go really, really well with the combination of the gold and all the other things that we've got going on. So I wanted to keep it fairly simple and I think it works really well. The two blue bits at the bottom that I couldn't quite cover in the twine, I then touched up with the liquid gold to match the best of the hardware. And I'm really pleased with how this has turned out and it's gonna be lovely being able to store some old cards and photos in this little suitcase. I hope you enjoyed the project as well. For further inspiration, make sure to check me out at onceaduckling.com. <laughs>